Hello, and welcome to Top of the Ticket 2014 Political Forum. Thank you for watching our program. I'm Jay Nolan, your moderator and master of ceremonies. The purpose of this event this evening is to introduce the candidates for Knox County Judge Executive and to let you hear and see each of them present their views on important issues that are impacting our county. The event is made possible by the support of our two sponsors. Our first sponsor and our host for this evening is Union College. Our second sponsor is Mountain Advocate Media, parent company of the Mountain Advocate newspaper. While neither of our sponsors endorse any specific candidate, the reason they sponsored this face-to-face -face candidate forum is to provide an opportunity for voters to see and learn about the candidates and to hear their positions on important issues. Both sponsors encourage you to vote on November 4th for the candidate you believe will be the best to serve Knox County for the next four years. The questions for this event were compiled from citizen input by the staff at the Mountain Advocate. No candidate was given any questions in advance. So this should be an interesting and informative evening. Asking the questions this evening will be a panel representing different segments of our county. First, representing our younger voters and representing Union College will be Stephanie Edgel. Secondly, representing businesses and civic groups is the president of the Knox County Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Corey Chestnut. Finally, our senior panelists and representing religious organizations is the Reverend Leonard Lester, pastor of First Advent Christian Church. Each panelist is donating their time and effort this evening, and we appreciate each of you very much. Thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. Our candidates are going face to face and in the hot seat. The, our candidates going face to face and in the hot seat this evening are Democratic Party nominee Mr. Mike Warren and his opponent, Republican Party nominee and current Judge Executive J. M. Hall. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thank you. Before we begin asking questions, we want to give the candidates a minute to introduce themselves and give some brief opening remarks. We will get, begin with our incumbent, Judge Hall. Thank you. Time to uh, be here tonight and to ask the questions on behalf of the people of the county. Um, thank Union College for allowing us to use their campus. Uh, they always work good with the county, got a good relationship with the union. We want to thank them as well. Thank the people here that's come out tonight. Uh, there's a big crowd here uh, on a rainy night to come out and, and to uh, see the interest in the candidates that they will have to choose from this fall. Uh, so with that being said, let me introduce myself. I'm J.M. Hall. Uh, I am your current county judge executive. I'm 51 years of age. Uh, Married to my wife, Ginger, who's here of 29 years. Uh, we've been married. Uh, she's in education for uh, 28 years. I have two children. Kimber Page is 24. She followed her mother's footsteps. Uh, she's in education, been there for three years. I have JT that came along. Uh, he's 13. Uh, he was a miracle baby. Uh, time is up, so that's my family. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Hall. Mike Warren. Oh, thank you, Jay. First of all, I'd like to say uh, thank you to everybody involved. Uh, I think this is a tremendous event. Uh, I'd like to do four or five more of these before the election, if it's possible. Maybe get a bigger uh, venue so we can bring a lot more people in. But uh, uh, it's really encouraging to see this many people turn out and know that they're interested in the, in the issues facing our county. Uh, again. I'm running for judge executive. I, I was born and raised in this county, and I'm running for judge executive because I think that we need a new direction. I think that we need to, uh, to progress rather than regress. So uh, with that having been said, I'm really, really looking forward to this evening. Thank you so much. Thank you both, gentlemen. We appreciate it. And now it's time to begin questions and answers. We will alternate between answering the first and answering last in order to be fair to each candidate. And based on a coin toss, the first candidate to give an answer will be Judge Hall. And our first question will come from Ms. Stephanie Edgel. So, Stephanie, we'll turn the microphone over to you. Edgel. 
education is important, what role will the county and you as the judge play in supporting our local school systems and Union College over the next four years? Well, I have worked closely with the education department. Uh, we have built a new walking track at Dewood Elementary last week. Um, we work closely with the Knox County Board of Education, the city schools. Um, we have worked with grants, uh, Union College. We work with them on providing the old hospital that belonged to uh, the Knox County Physical Court. Um, we work with them bringing a four-year nursing program here. Uh, we had worked with them on selling the hospital for $150,000. Um, as we got into this, uh, they paid a $75,000 down and owed a $75,000 balance. Uh, we worked with Congressman Rogers, uh, state and local officials, Senator Stivers, and got millions of dollars to revitalize the old hospital to uh, work to bring a four-year nursing program here. Uh, that allows our children who want to get an education here to actually stay at home, not have to go to Harrogate, Tennessee, to LMU, other programs for that. So we've worked with them uh, as we was going. We actually forgave the other 75000 because we wanted to partner with them and be a part of Union College and, uh, and our uh, school boards. So uh, with that being said, we have worked closely, and education is very important here. Uh, like I said, my wife has been in education for 28 years. Uh, she had the, the choice of retiring, but she didn't. Uh, she continued on. My daughter's in the education field as well. Uh, my mother retired as a school teacher. Uh, so I know that, that education is of vital importance here. And uh, I'm, I'm glad to see the children to be able to stay here at Union College and get that program. And uh, we will continue to work with them in any programs that they have uh, with the school boards or the college. I've had the opportunity to travel uh, across the state as being the county judge executive. Uh, a lot of people uh, ask me where am I from, and I'll tell them Knox County. Uh, they'll ask me what is the city seat, and I will tell them Barberville. Uh, when they say Barberville, they say, oh, is that where Union College is? So Union College has put our county on the map in this part. So with that being said, uh, that's why we want to partner with the Union, and, and uh, they're of vital importance to our county. I'm, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, I I'm, seem to have missed something in that question as to what we're going to do in the next four years yes, sir. to benefit Union College. First of all, let me say this. I hold two degrees from Union College. I have a bachelor's in, in business and accounting from Union College. I also have a master's in education. Uh, my sister actually is a teacher here at Union College at the present time. And I think I have a nephew-in-law who is president of the... Uh, Union College trustees or some some group on campus. So been very very active. Have been since uh, since I was a kid. I spent a lot of my childhood on this campus. Uh, education is it is the the uh, foundation for our future. Education is uh, what tomorrow is going to bring. Uh, my ideal uh, supporting education in Union College is as Judge Paul indicated work with them on any program. Um, the nursing school is a, is a great addition, uh, but uh, you're a student here, as you well know, Union College uh, has struggled in recent times. Uh, it's difficult to sell a private education in the mountains of Kentucky, so uh, one of the first things I would do is establish a scholarship program through the county judge executive's office. Uh, might put a little bit of uh, pressure on those that succeed me to do the same thing. Uh, but I would be supportive of any program at Union College. Thank you. Mr. Warren, Knox County is now part of the federal government promise zone and SOAR initiatives. As judge, how will you use these programs to help our county? Well, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the Promise Zone and with the SOAR initiative. Uh, first of all, most of those funds, I think, were diverted to the Highlands Investment Group. And uh, for the most part, most of those funds have been promised or earmarked for certain projects. Uh, I'm very, very excited about the SOAR program. Uh, that was uh, kind of a joint effort between Congressman Rogers and 
the Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program, who I've worked with for a long time. Uh, you know, there are so many things that we can do to tap into investment dollars, and that's really and truly what that is, is investment dollars. Uh, that is not a government program, it is not money that is accessible by governmental agencies, county governments, but rather it is accessible by individuals, by private companies. Uh, obviously, we need to promote an attitude and an atmosphere of growth in our county. Uh, one of the things that I would like to see us do uh, is turn our attention to the north and try to grow. Uh, uh, we, you know, we, for the longest time, we're sitting here in the mountains and we have no real place to grow. Uh, if you look at the geographics of it, uh, it's almost imperative that we go north towards Corbin. There's an industrial park there in that end of the county. Uh, we're also along the I-75 corridor. So I, I truly believe that if we're going to grow, we must grow in that direction. I also truly believe that, uh, that if we're going to grow, we're going to have to partner and ally with some people. Uh, we're rather isolated. We've got uh, 30,000 people or so in our county. Uh, we don't have a lot of industry. And when we go and sit down and talk, uh, and make, make no mistakes about it, uh, this is a political forum. Uh, we are a Republican county. I am a Democrat. If you go to Frankfurt, chances are you're going to find a Democrat governor in the, in the governor's office. So it's important that we tap into that resource. I do believe that if we partner with uh, adjoining counties, Laurel County, Whitley County, all of the cities involved in those counties, we can put together an alliance that will be heard. Uh, we've got 30,000 people in our county, but if you, if you group those three counties that I mentioned together, we actually touch 140,000 people. When you walk into the door in Frankfort and you say, I'm from Knox County and we need this, they don't listen. When you walk in there and you say, I'm representing 140,000 people, you got their ear. They will listen. 140,000 people has an influence. So, uh, you know, I, I would like to see us grow in that direction. Uh, I, I don't want to belittle or, or ignore the SOAR and the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, federal dollars that are out there, the promise zone. But, uh, you know, at one time there was a, uh, there was a meeting an organizational meeting it took about three days in Pikeville for SOAR and this county as a government did not have a single representative at that meeting. The only individual to my knowledge that made it from our county there was Denise Wayne Scott uh, from Union College. So uh, it is important but it's more important I think that we go forward and pursue industry jobs to our county. We must market we, we simply have to market and sell ourselves to the rest of the world. Thank you. Judge Hall. Okay. As he was saying, the three counties that you could combine, uh, actually the Promise Zone is in eight counties. Um, it's Letcher, it's Leslie, it's Bale, it's Knox, it's Clay, it's Whitley, it's Harlan, um, and Perry counties. Uh, so we're tapping in with seven counties in the Promise Zone. Uh, we've had several meetings here. We've had them at Union College. Uh, I know that there was several people that I see have been to our uh, Promise Zones meetings uh, that's took interest in it. Uh, it. It moves us up with uh, federal points. It puts us up higher as getting federal grants. Uh, we are working to, uh, the last meeting we had, we shared ideals and took it back. Um, and uh, we, uh, to the investment highlands groups that he was talking about. Uh, so we are underway with it. Uh, we are working with the Promise Zone, uh, the SOAR initiative. We did have a meeting over and announcements at uh, Pine Mountain. I was there. Uh, Hal Rogers was there. The governor was there. Uh, I think it's, uh, there's a lot of good things coming out of the SOAR. Uh, we are looking at black optic fiber that's coming in in the uh, mountains uh, to tap us in with uh, that end of the state up north. Uh, it's going to hook us up in, in, uh, in real time here. Uh, it's going to open the windows and opportunities here. Uh, talking about the north end of Corbin, we do have an industrial park there. Uh, we have now got Coe of Kentucky coming into that park. Uh, we had a spec building that has been setting for about four years that we built, uh, working on industrial. It's here now, so now we have uh, uh, underway of, of, of building a new building. Uh, so uh, the time is here uh, with the SOAR initiative and the Promise Zone. And, I think after the 2000, 
eight downturn in the economy that we're now on the upswing. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. There are 3,143 counties in the entire United States of America. Knox County is the 12th poorest county in America. Why? For me? Okay. Uh, first of all, I didn't know that we was the 12th poorest county in America. Uh, I don't know where those statistics have come from, uh, but as I have been serving as your county judge for the past eight years, uh, I know that we have created several jobs and lost several jobs. Uh, I think that one thing that makes us one of the poorest counties is because if you will look not only as my tenure as county judge, but county judges before me and the county in whole. Uh, you had uh, American Greetings that is on the Knox Laurel line, which is actually in Laurel County. Uh, they left here probably 15 years ago. Uh, you have National Standards that's probably been gone 12, 15 years now in Corbin. Uh, I think it's because Kentucky is not a right to work state. Uh, we lost Tremco uh, a couple years ago. Uh, I feel that uh, they left here and went to Ohio. Uh, it wasn't they shut the line down, they moved the line. Uh, I think until we uh, restructure our tax incentives from the state levels and uh, look at being a work to right state that uh, we lose those companies. Uh, uh, we have uh, E.K. Woods that left here. Uh, you've got several companies that left uh, prior in the last, well, in the last 15 to 20 years. And, and I think that Kentucky needs to look at their taxing structure to to uh, keep the industry here. We've had it here, and I think that's why we're losing it. Well, if, if we are 12th from the bottom, uh, even for a moment, if we consider that the 11 counties below us are all from Kentucky, we're still 108th in the state of Kentucky when it comes to the poorest counties. So let's not blame it on right to work law, or let's not blame it on state politics. Let's look at it for what it is. We have no jobs. We have lost jobs over and over and over again, and we're not replacing them. We're dwindling, but we're not replacing them. And the reason we're not replacing these jobs is because we're not trying to find jobs. We're not recruiting industry. One of the things I will do is I will take the, uh, the, a part of the salary of our deputy judge executive, and I will hire an industrial recruiter, someone young and energetic that is willing to travel, and I will put them on the road, selling our county every day. Now, we have lost uh, uh, major, major manufacturing jobs with Trucil. Uh, I'm advised that uh, there was an opportunity to save those jobs, but we didn't take advantage of it. We do have a tax structure that is quite cumbersome in Knox County. We have an occupational tax that is 1% of a working man's wage. Now, if you stop and think for a moment, the, in, the, in the year 2013, the property tax rate in Knox County, the average individual paid 0.72%. That's 72 cents out of $100 on the median property. So if you had a $65,000 piece of property, you paid about $400 in taxes. Well, if you're a working person, if you've got a household with two people in it making $25,000 a year each, and you got $50,000 median income in that household, they're paying $500 a year in an occupational tax. They're paying more in an occupational tax than what their property tax is. So it is cumbersome, and it's cumbersome to industry that want to move in here. When you factor in the, the problems that we're having with our hospital and with our educational system, we're not very lucrative. We're not very tempting to companies that might want to come here. So we do have to pursue it. We have to work. We have to sell ourselves. We have to market ourselves to the, to the rest of the world. Now, we have, in, in the eight years that Judge Hall has been in office, I believe we've had two jobs come in. 
we've, we've had uh, uh, the Xerox plant came in, brought about 50 jobs, and I saw where Judge Hall took credit for that. Um, to my knowledge, that was KCOC and Eastern Kentucky Concentrated Employment Program and Hazard. It was a joint effort on their part. Uh, Paul Doyle, KCOC, and Miss Becky Miller played a prominent role in those jobs. Uh, on the part of EK Self, Executive Director Jeff Whitehead from Pineville, Kentucky, and yours truly was the Special Projects Coordinator at EK Self when those jobs came in. That was the first project I worked on when I went to work for that agency. The other jobs that, uh, that, that I'm aware of that may have come in or is coming in is the COA jobs that Judge Hall mentioned. Those are Japanese-based uh, positions, and to my knowledge, those are the product of a trip to Japan that took place two years ago on the part of the Economic Development Cabinet, Mr. Larry Hayes, the Secretary, and Governor Bashir. This was the fruits of their labor. The only local participation, the only local assistance involved in obtaining those jobs came from Willard McBurney, the Mayor of Corbin, and Mr. Bruce Carpenter, who is the executive director of the Southeast Industrial Authority. So for Judge Hall to sit here and say that he's brought any jobs in is beyond me. All we've done is lost jobs. And without jobs, we are the poorest county. And when you talk about the poorest county, according to your ratings, uh, uh, Reverend Lester, we're not just talking about the median income. We're talking about living conditions. We're the poorest county, the services that we get. Uh, all of this goes back to one idea, one issue, tax base. If you've got jobs, your tax, tax base improves, your infrastructure goes up, you've got money to do things with. It's just that simple. Services improve. So, you know, our educational system depends so much on taxes. Uh, jobs improves our educational system because it is a proven time and time again that Student performance and school performance is directly correlated to socioeconomic factors. Rich districts do better than poor districts. Thank you. The ambulance service budget has been cut to help fund the Knox County Hospital. How will you make sure Knox County residents have reliable ambulance services? Me. Did you say ambulance service funds? Yes, sir. Have been cut. Um, well, if, first of all, it goes back to the same issue, same ideal. We must save our hospital. Uh, you know, without a hospital, um, we're dead in the water. Uh, you know, I've heard this issue back and forth, time and time and time again. Uh, eight years ago when Judge Hall took office, the hospital was about $12 million in debt. Uh, now I understand it's $23 million in debt. That's almost double in eight years. Uh, he recently ran an ad and said that he had secured a $23 million loan, that he had restructured the hospital debt, and he had saved 250 jobs. Well, we cannot service a $23 million debt at the hospital. We simply cannot do it. $23 million is beyond servicing. What he did, we borrowed $23 million to pay off a $16 million debt, and at the present time, we're running on that excess loan proceeds of $7 million. According to the advocate this week, the hospital's losing about $200,000 per month. And we've got a facility that's losing $200,000 per month that it has accrued a roughly $11 million in debt, in excess debt in the last eight years, it cannot continue to operate in that manner. In fact, I am told that we are in active uh, negotiations at this very time trying to sell the hospital because we know it will not survive. It is going to fail financially. And when it does, we're going to lose our health care. Uh, we're going to lose those jobs that go with it, which are desperately needed. And last but not least, we're going to lose a valuable asset when we go out here and try to recruit industry. I, I realize that's a foreign concept to the present administration, but we really need to be recruiting jobs to our county. And go out here and try to recruit jobs to our county without a hospital. 
there's a lot of factors these companies are looking at. Uh, and a lot of them, it goes back to what Reverend Lester asked earlier about the fact that we're the 12th poorest county in, the, in, in America. You know, we, we have to market ourselves. And if we don't have a hospital, we're in dire, dire straits. First of all, the question was ambulance service or hospital. What was the question? Um, the question, the ambulance service budget has been cut to help fund the Knox County Hospital. Okay. All right. It was cut. Uh, actually, that was one of the things that we have done it was to uh, secure the $23 million loan for the hospital. That's exactly right. Uh, and the reason that we done that was because that the ambulance service is in good shape. Uh, Financially, when I came in, it was 350000 that had owed 941 taxes. It was in trouble with the IRS. Uh, we secured the money um, that we got through grant monies, coal severance monies, to pay that off. Uh, once we done that, uh, the ambulance service turned, uh, bought new ambulances, paid for them. There's no debt, money in the bank. Uh, when I came there, uh, they had a line of credit of $175,000 uh, before the taxes came in. They was into their line of credit. Uh, they used up the whole 175,000. Uh, since we done that in 2008, and we fixed the ambulance service problem, uh, it's never been into its line of credit since then. Uh, they started restructuring the management. Uh, they worked on overtime schedules, uh, and now the ambulance service is in good shape and can give up some of its budget money. Uh, not only that is in order to secure this, uh, he says that it was owed $12 million when I came in. First of all, there was $16 million that was owed on it in bond capacity when I came in. There was another $6 million that was in accounts payable that makes $22 million. So it was a $22 million debt instead of $16 million. So therefore, we did go to the congressman. Uh, we made several trips to Washington, D.C. to get a low interest loan that is transferable to another entity. Uh, but what's so unique about this, and, I, and, and Jay Nolan touched on it in his column in The Advocate uh, last year, is the fiscal court and myself actually worked with the ambulance service to give up 4%. We worked with the health department who gave up 1.5%. We worked with the library who gave up 1.5%. So with all that said, that's 7%. In order to secure this USDA loan, that's a low interest loan that is transferable to UK, Central Baptist, St. Joe, any hospital, uh, that makes it enticing to sale. And that's what our game plan is, is to sell this, move the tax structures back. Uh, in order to receive the $23 million loan, we needed to create a hospital district. So we done that. But we didn't want to raise taxes on the people. So we asked and worked with those three entities to reduce their rates to allow us to create a hospital district. And I think Jay Nolan's column may have said that that was kind of unpresidential and that Washington, D.C. and Frankfurt or to look at what Knox County done to be able to come together as a community and then be a part of giving up tax monies to create and save those jobs and to keep our hospital here. Now, we could have closed the hospital, but we would have still had the $23 million that we'd had to pay. So therefore, you would have raised the tax rates in order to pay the hospital off and you would have had a hospital tax with no hospital. So that's why we've done it. It's working fine. Uh, the ambulance services uh, uh, budget is great and uh, we have no problems. Thank you. Thank you. Judge Hall. Yes. If elected, what will be the top three issues for you personally during the next four years? Top three issues? Yes. Uh, well, we will continue to work on jobs. That's number one. Of course, everybody knows that is a big issue that's, that's been talked about tonight is jobs. Uh, we are one of the poorest counties in the United States, uh, but we understand why that we are the poorest counties in the United States because we have some factories who've left here uh, with the unions and the right to work states. Uh, but we will work and continue to build spec buildings. Uh, True Seal building sold. Uh, when I found out that there was a guy called Scrap Hub uh, that bought it. I knew that at that point in time that they was probably going to scrap the building for what they gave for it. Uh, the next day, I actually met with Greg up there on site uh, to try to work out. I called the, the State Economic Cabinet and uh, uh, Bruce Carpenter from Corbin, and we all came together, worked with Greg to be able to salvage the building. Uh, 
he took just a portion of the building off and allowed us time to try to market his building without putting it into scrap to be able to someone here locally to purchase the building and that's happened. We've got two local businessmen here in Knox County who have now purchased the True Seal building working with two different companies as we speak to bring the industry back into the county. So, you know, we do work to salvage what we have, uh, like saving the jobs. We could have put a tax on, no hospital, pushed it down the road. We didn't. We need the hospital, we need the jobs, and we're going to see it through. Uh, so jobs is one of the number one issues here. Uh, second, I think, is the education program here, is to be able to get our children educated to where they don't have to leave home. Uh, a lot of times if they leave here for school, uh, they don't come back. And I think that hurts our county as well. So we can work with the education programs with Union College and, uh, and keep, keep them here at home. Uh, third thing is, 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 you know, we've put this wellness center here uh, to work on health. Uh, I think that's a lot to do with, with, the, with the, uh, the schools, the education, is to spread our health wealth here. Uh, I know we've built walking tracks and we've got the, the new swimming pool here and uh, I think we just need to work on, uh, on uh, keeping them here, keeping them healthy, being able to work. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mr. Warren. Oh. Three issues. Uh, I think the number one issue is, uh, as has been bandied about, <laughs> is jobs. Uh, and I say that because I really feel like uh, that jobs is the answer to all of our problems. It may take a while, but if we have jobs, if we have a solid tax base, we can solve all the other problems. Uh, second issue, obviously, is the hospital. Judge Hall says it's working out just fine, but uh, I can look at Mr. Nolan's newspaper. Last week at the hospital board meeting, they're losing almost $200,000 a month. I can add, in the next four years, what is that? $9.6 million. So it's not working fine. We've got to find a solution and save our hospital, save those jobs, and more importantly, even save the opportunity to get more jobs. The third issue I think that really is pressing at this point in time uh, is our jail. Uh, it, you know, our jail is costing us a lot of money to operate. Uh, a, a new jail is beneficial to us. I won't argue with that for a second. We, we need a jail that is regional in nature, that can handle our prisoners, can handle regional prisoners, can handle state prisoners, and can handle federal prisoners. We can do that, and instead of spending millions of dollars each year transporting prisoners all around and paying everybody else's fees and sending money outside our county, we can literally operate pretty much at zero. And in addition to that, by building a regional facility, we can create 75 to 100 jobs that we desperately need in our county. So again, that would be my top three. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Warren, I think this is uh, your question first. Our citizens have identified illegal drug use as the number one problem facing Knox County. What will you do in the next four years if elected to fix or to address this particular problem? Well, let me say this, uh, Reverend Lester. First of all, drugs is a plague in, throughout our county, throughout our nation, uh, and it touches everybody. It is a disease. Uh, I presently work for Comp Care. I'm a substance abuse counselor, so I, I've seen firsthand what it can do to people. It destroys families. Um, in Knox County, we, we do have a terrible uh, uh, drug problem. Uh, one of the reasons, again, I hate to harp on this, but one of the reasons, again, is we have no jobs. We have no jobs here. We are the 12th poorest county in America. Uh, so many people that I run into uh, are doing drugs, uh, a way to make a living. You know, drug dealing is rampant. Uh, you know, we need... First of all, I would like to see uh, uh, a rehab program right here in our county. Uh, like I, said, we, I work at a facility in, in Corbin. We have a six-week waiting period. Uh, we need to spend more money on prevention and rehabilitation, not necessarily as much money on criminal prosecution. 
Uh, we need to accept the fact that disease, uh, that it, addiction is a disease, and then we need to treat it accordingly. Uh, you know, with the advent of Obamacare that everybody likes to call uh, in this area, the Affordable Care Act, they now pay for, they now pay for rehabilitative treatment for drug addicts and, and uh, drug users. So uh, the opportunity is there to get people into treatment. Uh, the opportunity is now to bring jobs in and put people to work. Uh, you know, uh, idle hands, I guess, make for uh, mischief. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but uh, I really feel like that that if we can grow economically and not be so depressed in this area, uh, people have opportunities to get a job. Uh, I think that will help to. The drug problem is not just Knox County. Uh, first of all, let me say it's across the United States. Uh, second of all, we do work with our local sheriff's department. Uh, we funded them uh, $300,000 this year out of the county's portion of the budget to actually work with the sheriff's department uh, to buy drugs, uh, to use in their budget to uh, help the war on drugs. Uh, like Mr. Warren says, uh, treatment is probably the best thing, uh, but education, uh, it's got to start with the, within the home. Uh, I think the families and the parents uh, need to work uh, with their children uh, because your own drugs don't mean you're a bad person. Uh, it's just, it's a, it's a habit. It's like smoking, it's like chewing. Uh, once you get on, it's hard to get off. Uh, so treatment is uh, the best thing for the drugs, uh, but we have, uh, like I said, we funded the Sheriff's Department uh, $300,000 a year uh, to help them with their drug problem. And we will continue to do so. Okay, now we're going into our final round of questioning. We're going to ask our candidates to kind of limit their responses to just the brief answers. And panelists, will you go through our last rounds of question, please? How open and transparent should county government be to the citizens? I think that it should be open uh, and, and parent. Is that what you said? Transparent. Okay, transparent, yes. Uh, it's... Uh, our physical court meetings that we have is every uh, third Wednesday of the month. Uh, it's at 1130. Uh, we welcome anyone who wants to come to our physical court meeting, uh, ask questions. Uh, so I think that we are open and transparent. Our doors are always open. Um, uh, I like input from the citizens. Uh, Brother Lester comes to our meetings uh, just about every time, and uh, there's no question that's asked that we don't turn down. Uh, we welcome you, and uh, our doors are always open, and, and I think it should be open and transparent. Thank you. Uh, most certainly, uh, I think everything that we do as a government has to be transparent. Um, it's ironic that you would ask that question, but, uh, you know, I have a gentleman here tonight who's not in the room, but he's been trying for seven months now to get records from the judge's office concerning payments made to a, a company in Knox County. Uh, we've yet to get that. But uh, uh, I think that in the last 10 days, we've made about eight trips to the courthouse, and we still have not gotten that information. So it's good to hear Judge Hall say that we need to be transparent. Uh, I guess that means that he's going to get those checks that we've requested, we're going to get those in the next day or two. Uh, you know, I think that uh, anytime you handle taxpayer money, anytime you handle money in a fiduciary capacity, whether it be taxpayer money or your client's money or whatever the case might be, you have to be accountable to everybody. It's just that simple. Thank you. Mr. Warren. Coal severance tax dollars are slowly going away. So if there is little or no coal severance money, will you raise taxes or what will you do to make up the shortfall from the state? Well, coal severance taxes has dwindled to almost nothing. Important, excuse me. One of, the, one of the problems, obviously, with coal severance taxes is that uh, the money has never come back to the counties in full like it should. You know, it's went to a lot of different places. Downtown Louisville don't mine a lot of coal, but they get coal severance tax money. Uh, but 
by the same token, I would say this. Um, I don't think we have to raise taxes. I think we need to tighten our belt. I think we need to be a little bit uh, better stewards with the taxpayer money. Uh, I, I, actually, I would like to see us repeal the uh, occupational tax that is uh, uh, an albatross around employers' necks. It's costing, it, it's costing every person in this county when they go to work. So I'd like to see that repealed. Uh, and I honestly do not see the need to raise taxes. Um, you know, we, uh, uh, we spend a lot on roads and bridges. Uh, we contract out a lot of road and bridge uh, work. Uh, I feel like that if we have equipment and we have manpower, we need to do our own work. It's just that simple. If we can do it for $100, why pay somebody 150 to do it? So I think if we tighten our belts and, and run the budget, and be good stewards of our money, the, the ideal of a tax increase is not even uh, an option. Thank you. Judge Hall. I would agree. Tighten the belts. That's, that's, that's a good plan. Uh, Cole Severance money, uh, single county Cole Severance money, is still here in Knox County as is, is strong as it has been. Uh, we have several jobs here um, that's working on uh, uh, KJ area. We've got uh, up on uh, a smoky Route 6, uh, but our coal service has, has actually kept it uh, kept a good pace. Uh, a lot of the other counties have dwindled down, but we are looking at uh, tightening our belts. We've done that every year. Uh, our tax rates when I came in office uh, was 10.98 cents per hundred. Uh, when I was elected eight years ago, we set the tax rate every year, and uh, we've never took a compensating rate. Uh, this year, we didn't take a compensating rate. We lost $94,000. We trim our budget. Last year, we didn't take the compensating rate. We lost $43,000. So in the past eight years, we have never raised taxes, and we've managed to uh, work our budget, make it work, uh, even with the coal severance money that you're talking about goes to other counties. That's multi-county pots. Uh, Louisville doesn't mine coal, uh, but Marvel City doesn't mine coal either, but we buy police cruisers for the city of Barberville. Uh, I think the city of Barberville is a part of Knox County, and uh, we spend coal severance money in our city as well as Louisville and so forth. Uh, so, but we have tightened our belts, and we've done it every year, and we've never raised the taxes uh, on the people of Knox County. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Judge Executive, I think um, this is, uh, you get the answer. This one okay. first. People deserve leaders that they trust. What standard do you use to determine what is right and wrong, and based on that standard, what in your past proves voters can trust you? Well, I think that the standard that on the trust is how you're raised. Uh, I came from a good family. Uh, my mother here taught me not to steal, not to cheat, not to lie, and uh, I just grew up in those values. And, and I have lived by those values. And the people of the county can trust me because we have audits for the past eight years. We've never had any money missing. We handle about $15 million a year is what our budget is. Uh, that's in our county operating budget. Uh, that's not our hospital. That's not our ambulance service. That is our road, bridge, jail, and general funds. Uh, so with that being said, I think that I have proved myself the last eight years that they can trust me because we have an audit every single year, and every fourth year, the state does the audits. And uh, we have had clean audits and never had any money missing. So the proof's in the pudding, and uh, for the past eight years, we've had clean audits. And, uh, Thank you. Mr. Warren? Well, let me just say this. Uh, I think probably the way you're raised is, is a pretty good indication of how you turn out. And I, too, had very good parents uh, raised me uh, to know right from wrong. Uh, at this point in time in my life, uh, let me say this, I am a born again Christian. Uh, I don't need anybody to tell me what's right and wrong. I've got a savior that tells me that. Uh, I try to live my life to the best of my ability each and every day. I try to be the best person I can be. I'm not perfect, never have been, never will be. There's only been one perfect person walk this earth. Uh, I feel like the question may be in reference to my past, and I will say this. I'm 
very, very comfortable with who I am, where I've been, and where I'm going. I've never stolen any money. So if you want to talk about trust issues, we'll talk about it. If you want to make the character an issue in this race, I'll, I'll be tickled to death to do that. I, I feel like my character will stack up with anybody in it. So uh, I believe that over the years, I, you know, I have a reputation. I was county attorney here years ago, and I have a reputation uh, that I was good to everybody that come into my door. I treated everybody with respect. I treated everybody fairly. And I never stole any money. Uh, so uh, if that's an issue, if, if voters feel like they can't trust me, uh, I'd be surprised. Like I say, I feel very comfortable with my character and with who I am. Thank you. Thank you, panelists. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the questions this evening. Again, we thank our panel. Thank you for your excellent questions. We thank you for your help, and we thank you for your participation. Also, we want to thank our sponsors. And before we wrap up, we want to give a special thanks to our two candidates. Thank you for coming out and participating tonight. Thank you. And to give them a chance to wrap up, we're going to give each candidate two minutes to make their closing remark. So we will begin with candidate Warren. Sir, the floor is yours. So two minutes and two minutes and we're finished, right? Yes. I feel like I'm on display in a showroom. <laughs> uh, I just want to say again, I really appreciate the opportunity to be here. I really think that this is an ideal situation, and, and I would love to do four or five more of them. Uh, I'm sure Judge Hall would too. But, uh, uh, just say this. I'm running for judge executive in Knox County, uh, not because I have to. Uh, I've reached that point in time in my life where I don't have to do anything. You know, uh, I'm running for judge because I want to. I'm running for judge because I think I can make a difference in the direction that this county goes. I think I can make a difference for our children and our grandchildren. Uh, their future is at stake here. Uh, I'm, not, uh, I'm not on a bandwagon. It's just a point blank, very simple process. I think that we can be a great place to live. I think that we can grow and we can prosper and we can bring jobs in and we can give our young people a reason to stay home. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Judge Hall. Thanks, Jay. In closing, you know, I would like to say that it's been a privilege and an honor to, to serve the people of the county uh, for the past eight years. Uh, and I think that, that uh, thank you for putting your trust in me. Uh, and uh, I hope I've lived up to your expectations. As many of you know, my political career started over 20 years ago as a county coroner, uh, dealing with families in, in that time of need. Uh, I think has made me a better person and a better uh, public servant to know the needs in, in, uh, in those difficult times. Uh, but with that being said, um, uh, I also feel that the experience that I've got, the eight years of experience, uh, goes a long way. Uh, we have started some projects. Uh, our hospital, uh, I think we can complete that in the next two years. Uh, he mentioned the jail situation. Uh, this month in October, uh, we have already done a jail feasibility study. Uh, we have that completed uh, with the hospital district coming in place. Now the bonding capacity, we couldn't build the jail. So we are voting this month on the feasibility study on, on the, uh, the new jail. So that's going to be an issue in, in the fiscal court to move forward with the jail situation. Uh, it will bring jobs back here and people won't have to go to other counties uh, to see their loved ones. So uh, with that being said, uh, I would like to ask uh, uh, that, uh, that you would consider giving me another four years to finish those projects, to get the hospital sold, uh, to complete the jail uh, that we are now working on. And, uh, uh, my family uh, thanks you, myself, uh, for, for giving us that opportunity. Uh, we humbly ask for your vote and support, and uh, we truly thank you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, that completes our program for this evening. Thanks again to each of our candidates for participating. We greatly appreciate you providing your time and your effort and your energy to make this program possible. 
Likewise, we thank again our panelists and our sponsors, Union College and the Mountain Advocate. Remember, the election is Tuesday, November 4th. Please let your voice be heard and vote. Finally, thanks to each of you for watching. Good night and God bless.